your money is. Do you know where your money is? And today we're going to talk about something I think is interesting, and that is most young people today are clueless when it comes to money management and finance. And, and Holly, welcome back to Health, Wealth, and Happiness. Hey, Gary. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, and, and, and I think this is interesting. This is a new study that was conducted by Price Waterhouse Coopers and George Washington University, and basically it confirms that millenniums, although they have a great deal of knowledge, up almost a third, 32%, admitted that they have overdrawn their checking accounts, and most have no clue when it comes to money management. What's this all about? I think a great deal of this is, and, and I want to make this clear, I don't assume that everything is a parent's fault. I just feel like the whole generation, I mean, I mean even like with, with our kids are adults now, but when you look back, and of course I do money for a living, so there were things that I taught my son, but I probably still could have done better. But a lot of people actually didn't teach their kids about money, like real money, you know, how to handle money, how to handle a bank account, because they didn't even think about it. And maybe they thought it was happening at school. So this report is interesting because it's giving the report card of, you know, the people, the, 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 country, the states that, you know, got A's, B's, C's, and F's. And, and it's very scary. There's only, I think there was only eight states that got an A, you know, for their kids uh, doing good, uh, you know, with the report card. <laughs> so people are not teaching their kids things that they need to from a very young age. And that's, that's really a shame because it can start in the home and it can start very early. Most parents give their kids some kind of an allowance. That's a great opportunity to teach your child money management. Help them set up an account at the bank. Help them with a checking account. Help them write a check. You know, I think so many times kids will go to college and their parents will give them a credit card. And, and the kids have no responsibility with that credit card other than spend, spend, spend. They're out of money and call mom or dad and say, I, I, I don't have any, any money on my credit card. Uh, we'll re-nourish it. Or uh, yeah. you know, my debit card is broke. Uh, what do you do about that? Do something. I, I don't have any money. And it's done for them. No wonder they don't know anything about money management. Yeah, and I don't know why this happens on such a universal level. But truthfully, like you said, when you're giving your six-year-old a five-dollar allowance or whatever, you can teach them at a very young age because money doesn't really mean anything to like a five or six-year-old. But you can say, okay, here's five one-dollar bills. I want you to put one of them over here. This is going to be your savings account so you can save up for something that you want to buy and, and maybe one dollar you give to some kind of organization or set aside for and um, you know try to get a little bit more money i mean i think it's so important even if it's just one dollar for a young kid to understand wait a second this is i'm gonna have three dollars to spend or two dollars to spend i'm gonna put two dollars in my savings account and they don't really know what it is until the real time goes by. That's why I call this real school, because it's not about talking about money. It's about doing it. Like, what does it feel like to put money aside? What does it feel like to give to someone who needs it? What does it feel like to spend money, but only with real cash? And the same when they get older, getting your kid a bank account, like a joint bank account, and teaching them how to, you know, reconcile a bank account, it's, it's very simple to do. You don't have to be a CPA to reconcile a bank account or to look at your bank account because a lot of these millennials, they don't even look at their bank account. They just wait to see if their debit card, you know, gets denied. <laughs> and it's so easy nowadays to go online. And, and to teach a child the value of a dollar is not that difficult. You know, kids today, you're right, have no you know, we, we hear parents say this all the time. Our kid has no value of, of what it, what things cost or, or the, the, the worth of a dollar. Well, that's your fault. 
that's not the child's fault. Your, your kid will say, Mom, I, I want a new Game Boy game. And, and it costs 45 bucks or $50. Eh, you say to him, that's fine. I'm going to, you know, you're going to get your allowance. And in order to save for the Game Boy game that you want, I'm giving you $5 a week. You're going to have to save for 10 weeks. That's two and a half months that you can't buy anything. You have to save this money, and I'll help you out. We'll put it aside, and when you have $50, we'll go buy that Game Boy that you want. That's how much it's going to cost, two and a half months' worth of your allowance to buy that game. Now yes, your 10-year-old gets an idea that. of what a buck costs, you say. So don't tell me you can't teach a 10-year-old what, what a dollar is. By God, you can. Yes. Yeah, you can. And really, if you start at a young age and you're not ever instilling fear with money, because there's so much fear that surrounds the subject of money. So if instead you're just showing someone how they're supposed to work with money and save with money and give with money and spend with money in the, in the right proportion, then it wouldn't be so stressful, you know, when people are going into college and then they would know not to get a credit card when they go into college and and also you know of course there's a student loan debt issue too so if you don't know how to manage money and then you have debt then you know that is definitely going to have an effect on the overall economy in the next decade for and it's going to affect everyone it's not only young kids you know teenagers are the same way but mom all of my girlfriends have bought this designer pair of jeans from Gap. They only cost $75. $75 for a pair of jeans when you're 14 years old and you'll wear them four times and not grow them. <laughs> right. Come on. If that's what you want, knock yourself out. Here's your allowance. You save it, and, it, and until you get the money for them, you're not going to be able to buy anything else for weeks on end to buy all right. Get those jeans if that's what you gotta have. Now, it tells people they to they make, make decisions about how they spend their money. And maybe the seventy-five dollar jeans at Gap take a back seat to. Well, maybe I don't need them, and maybe not everybody. In fact, I guess maybe not all my girlfriends. In fact, do have those jeans after all, Mom. You see, and so right. it's little or no wonder that this generation that we call millenniums don't have a clue as to how to manage money or the worth of a dollar or balancing a checking account. I'm concerned about the fact that so many kids today don't know how to write a check, don't know how to balance a check, uh, don't have any clue as to how to money manage. And, and I'm sure as a CPA, you scratch your head all the time and say, how are these kids getting through college and not having a clue as to how to do any of these things until you talk to them about have you ever managed money before, only to find out, well, no, uh, mom and dad have always done that for me. Yeah, and that is a problem when you're paying for everything or paying off credit cards, even if your kid is in college. And at that point, and I worked when I was in college, but some people are in a position to where they're not having to work. Still, like if you're using a credit card and someone else is paying for it, then you really don't know. Until you go out on your own, you think, wow, my parents pay for so much. I know they did when I was in college. They, um, I had my own place, but they still pay for things like insurance and stuff. So it, I remember having, being in shock also, like when I was really on my own, like, oh my God, there was so many expenses that I didn't even think about. So even if you're supporting your kid during college, there still needs to be a conversation about, you know, how much how much their expenses are going to be when they go on their own because you can't cover those things forever. And I do see a lot of times right now where they expect this to be covered, and I don't mean this to be a political statement, but a lot of these millennials, because of their financial situation, are qualifying for Obamacare insurance. So it's like there's, this is the whole thing is being perpetuated, that somebody else is going to take care of this for me, and I worry about that too. I think that those um, plans are in place for a reason and that there are people that need those plans, so let me be clear on that. 
but I'm finding that some people are just assuming they should get that from the beginning, like when they graduate from college, that they should automatically have that, versus it being, okay, I'm just going through a rough time, and I'm glad that this is available for me while I get back on my feet. Now, Holly, you can take it one step further. Look at the numbers of kids that never repay their student loans. I'm not talking about that have student debt from student loans. I'm talking about people that have debt from student loans and never repay their loans. It's monumental. Yeah. And, it, and you know, the IRS will take your, your refund. You know, they'll take it forever. <laughs> but it's like still not getting it paid back because then people just manipulate their W-2s so that they don't have a refund. Now, there's a, there's a big game going on with this right now. You know, it's pretty bad. So I think it is important for people to help their kids from a young age, and if they're already teenagers and they haven't been, I think it's important to be involved in helping them to be independent with money and also be creative. You know, like you said earlier, if somebody wants a game, well, have them turn in three games that they're not using anymore. They can get a credit towards the new game, and that'll save them money. You know, things like that, just like being creative with your money and with your spending. It's not only people not repaying their student debts, it's the numbers of people that go on to professional school. I'm, I'm here to tell you, if you go on to professional school, you're going to amass at least a quarter, listen to me carefully, a quarter of a million dollars in debt. No wonder kids right. are getting married later in life. Why? They've got a quarter of a million dollars in debt to pay back. They can't afford to get married. They can't afford to buy a house. They can't afford to do anything because they're paying back a quarter of a million dollars that they've accumulated while going to professional school, you see. How am I such an expert in that? Well, my youngest son is an attorney. Enough said? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Life is a learning experience. Sure is. Life is a learning experience. And I thank you so much for coming and sharing on health, wealth, and happiness. Yes.